Welcome back to another tactical account video. Today we'll do something a little bit unusual for us and we're going to talk politics. There is a lot of talk right now about some very extreme gun control bills that are making our, their way through our, through our government. And I think I'm a little more optimistic than a lot of people in that I don't think they will pass. I think some executive orders from Biden's office could come through, but background check bills or assault weapons bans, I think are going to have a very, very uphill battle. So we're going to go over some links here, some quotes, some tidbits about what's going on in Washington, and I'll kind of walk you guys through my thought process on what's going on. Now, just having said that, I think it's important for us, and if you're listening to this video, to write our senators, our reps, and make sure that make sure that they know to vote no on these bills. Let them know how you feel. You know, so, uh, ask your friends and family as well to contact their reps, support you know whichever gun rights organization. <clears throat> Uh, you'd like, but I think it's important to uh, support somebody. And when they send out emails ask, asking for actions to be taken, I think it's important in, in these days to do that. Anyway, first up we have Chuck Schumer saying that on Tuesday morning, today is 3-24-2021, the Denver shooting happened a few days ago. So this was yesterday. Chuck saying that the two background check bills passed by the House will go on the floor at some point. Um, last week, he said that those bills will be taking up this week. It's Wednesday, end of the day. That has not happened, so there is definitely something happening that's slowing them down right now, which is good news, obviously. As an aside, I would follow Rob here to a updates on Twitter. If you're not doing so already, he has a lot of good things that he shares. I think most of us have seen this, the White House um, calling for, obviously, some very unconstitutional actions to be taken. And then here we're kind of getting into some of the good news now. Um, this is a reporter from CNN, as you can see. And I'm not sure who she's quoting here. It's not quite clear. But um, or if it's just her thoughts, but she's saying these do not have... 60 votes in the Senate. If you're not familiar, 60 votes is how many it takes to move past the filibuster. Um, a filibuster isn't a constitutional thing, it's just a rule the Senate has said that <clears throat> for a uh, piece of legislation to go on the floor in 60 votes and then 51 to pass. So right now with the Senate being 50-50 with uh, the Democratic vice president being the 51st tie-breaking vote if needed. Democrats have the Senate, but they do not have the 60 votes needed to, to, uh, gear the, to get past the filibuster. Additionally, they um, there is some talk about getting rid of the filibuster, but I'm, I think that might be uh, harder than it sounds for them as well. <clears throat> so let's start with a CNN article from March 23rd talking about Biden and here we're just looking for a few quotes that I think are kind of telling about what's going on um, in Washington so first of all right here these two paragraphs starting right here a few weeks ago um, gun control advocates met with Biden in the White House but it sounds like that meeting did not go as well as they had hoped they left the White House without a clear picture of the timeline for unveiling any gun control steps or a legislative plan for advancing gun control measures in an evenly split Congress. And it wasn't clear from the meetings whether Biden would support doing away with the filibuster for gun control legislation. <clears throat> Good news, obviously. Um, additionally, last week after the unfortunate shooting in Atlanta, when he met with the Asian community, the issue of gun control did arise briefly. You, you would think that after a shooting like that, um, as the Chicago ex-mayor uh, Manuel used to say, don't let a good 
crisis go to waste. They would have pounced on it, but they chose not to. And then later or in Georgia at Emory University, he made no mention of gun control. Now let's scroll down here a little bit. Now, this is also, I think, um, a little bit telling. As a candidate, Biden said on his first day in office, he would send a bill to Congress repealing liability protection for gun manufacturers and close background check loopholes, actions he has yet to take seven weeks into office. So he ran on this grand um, strategy, made all kinds of promises, and he is not keeping them. I love it. <clears throat> now, obviously, I think most of us know who Mitch McConnell is. And he was asked about background checks. And uh, he said with regard to the bill that is going to be up in the House, the one that was that was passed, I joined Joe Manchin in opposing that bill. Joe is a Democratic senator from West Virginia, a very red state. Here are the results in 2020. Very red, but he's a Democrat. So I think that kind of tells you... Um, where he stands in the grand scheme of things. So 50 Democrats minus one Joe, um, they don't even, ha even without the filibuster, they do not have the 50 votes needed on the Democrat side to pass these bills. Hopefully no no um, Republicans, you know, vote for these, but it's looking pretty good so far. More on Manchin here. Um, again, the worry is if the filibuster goes away, it would be much, much easier to ram some of these things through. But Manchin says that even if his bill does not get the support, he will not support gutting the filibuster. To me, he's him and Joe over here in 2013 worked on a, a very light compared to the current version background check bill. So he's saying he's a Republican. I still support background checks. But he also says the House bill won't pass the Senate. Good news. Now here's some, this is from today. I just saw this article. Um, I think we all know who David Hogg is. He's an aspiring pillow entrepreneur. Um, I hope Joe Manchin enjoys his last term. He, he hopes that the the senator from West Virginia will lose his job if he votes for gun control. Um, and I think here it says very well. Um, this is a good article. And again, I think it's just saying that they do not have Manchin's voice or vote for all these gun control bills which is great, great news, obviously, for everybody. Um, we have a, a little more info here. Um, now, this is from the Democratic side again. Um, Schumer, I think there's an interesting line right here. We all know who Feinstein is, that she wants to send a Judiciary Committee to hold a hearing on her bill. This is the assault weapons bill. And then Durbin, who is unfortunately my senator, I didn't hear her request. Um, he said he's more interested in advancing the House passed background check measures, which we've uh, discussed are unlikely to pass. So there is just so much talk here about this background check legislation that seems, I think, to a lot of people less extreme than the assault weapons ban. And it's just, it's facing such an uphill battle. Now, I would obviously prefer if, you know, Mitch. McConnell was the leader. If we had won one of those seats in Georgia back in January, that would have been the case. That's not where we are, unfortunately, but I think we're still in good shape. <clears throat> and then just kind of the long term. So let me back up here. Jake Charles um, blogs, uh, writes a lot about um, Second, Name, Second Amendment court cases and law. And he just tweeted this um, actually yesterday. The, uh, during the conference on Friday, this upcoming Friday, the Supreme Court will be debating if they want to grant a certification, a cert, rather, to a, to a Second Amendment case 
that's asking whether the Second Amendment allows the government to prohibit ordinary law-abiding citizens from carrying handguns outside the home for self-defense. Um, and the reason why he thinks this is something to watch is because the lawyer for the petitioners is Paul Clement. And he's the only lawyer who's convinced the court to hear a Second Amendment case in the last decade. Um, I've heard his name mentioned before. Um, it seems that when he attaches his name to a case, it, it gets some it gets some news, gets some traction. He doesn't attach his name to cases that are just kind of uh, long shots. He thinks these things are ones that he could possibly win. Um, I think a lot of people might be disillusioned because um, before Justice Barrett came onto court, um, in theory, there was a 5-4 to four conservative majority, um, but John Roberts... Uh, I think was clearly anti-gun. He did not want to rock the boat too much. He has other priorities than um, protecting people's rights. Um, so now I think we do have a clear five to five to four majority, and I think gun cases, as these good ones come up again, might actually be heard. So I think in the short term, um, especially with the filibuster staying in place, I think we'll, we'll, we'll be okay for the most part outside of those executive orders that Biden could pass. And I think in the long term, um, I think there could be good things coming down the pipe from the Supreme Court that could help us out for the long term. So those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, and again, just make sure to contact your senators. I've already done it You know, ch uh, to uh, my guy, Dick Durbin. Not sure how much that'll do, but I did it. And... Um, Tune in for, for more content from us here coming up shortly. Thanks, guys.